Hello and welcome to our Pony Express how-to video series. In today's video, we'll demonstrate the use of the Nmap application, specifically the OneTouch as well as running Nmap from the command line on the PonePad. To begin, <coughs> it is important that you insert the appropriate adapter uh, that you intend to use Nmap in association with. Now, Nmap on the PonePad does support the use with the TP-Link adapter, uh, the TrendNet USB Ethernet adapter, uh, the onboard Nexus adapter, uh, wireless adapter, as well as uh, Evil AP in association with Evil AP. Uh, when you're launching Nmap, you will be prompted to choose the adapter in question. Now here's where you have to give some forethought to the process. Um, it is recommended that you, that you already have established a connection using that specific adapter before launching the Nmap application. Now, in my particular example today, I'm going to demonstrate the use of Nmap in association with the onboard Nexus adapter, uh, the wireless adapter. Therefore, that being WLAN 0, I've already established a connection to the network that this pwn pad is connected to, and I'm going to be subsequently demonstrating Nmap to scan the, you know, the live targets and, and other relevant information um, on that network. Um, so here's an example. Let's go right into the Network Tools folder, launch Nmap. You can see a list of the adapters that Nmap supports. Now, again, as I make mention, you need to ensure that you've already established the connectivity in association with that adapter. Um, in this particular example, I'm going to be demonstrating it in association with the internal Wi-Fi adapter, which is uh, WLAN 0. Select number 2, hit Enter. And what you'll see is a process where Nmap will begin scanning for the live targets in this network. It doesn't take long to discover uh, that there are five live hosts in that uh, Class C range. Now, the way Nmap, specifically the OneTouch application on the PwnPad works, is that it will um, ascertain what the IP address is for the current network for which you have connectivity to, and then it will, by default, um, scan uh, the class C of that specific network. So in this particular case where, the, uh, where I have established a connectivity to a 10.0.0.x network, by default Nmap will scan 10.0.0.0.24 um, by default. Here in this particular example you can see five hosts have been identified as live. The results have been stored in an, in an appropriate name named text file. Uh, you now have an opportunity to perform a service scan. That upon, I'm sorry, that which upon would uh, result in Nmap to scan for a thousand common services against each one of these live targets. Now I certainly can begin that process right now, but it's probably going to take a few minutes. So what I'll do is I will run it. I'll choose yes to the prompt with the expectation that we might be coming back in a few minutes to review the results. While that is running, this will give me an opportunity to discuss uh, the use of Nmap um, alternative to use of the OneTouch application, the command line. So going to your home screen on your phone pad, use your root shell, use your command line prompt, and uh, just type Nmap and bring that right up. And you'll see a list of all the switches that Nmap supports. Obviously, this is 646, the latest. Um, I would recommend, obviously, keeping Nmap up to date. Um, you know, it is considered the premier information gathering tool uh, with use of Nmap. Everyone's going to seem to have their own set of switches for use. Um, just as an example of using Nmap right now uh, from the command line, I'll just do a quick Nmap. And I do believe I saw a 10.0.0.6 address uh, dash O. Um, basically indicating I want to perform an OS scan. I want to understand what the operating system of that target to be. I'll run that. Uh, alternatively, I could, you know, run whatever I want, but I mean, as a great example, um, you have full power and flexibility to use Nmap. Maybe create your own scripts, if you will, um, basically leveraging different sets of switches. And then the results, obviously, you're going to want to use a dash O, lowercase o, in an appropriate format. And then you could copy that file as well as any other files from, the, uh, from your pwn pad to a USB stick. Um, while that's currently running, let's talk about the use of copying files. Specifically, the, uh, in the applications folder, there is a captures dump application. When you run captures dump, uh, you will be given a prompt to uh, basically, if you have a USB stick inserted at the bottom of the pad using your OTG cable, you can basically copy all of the capture files, including anything acquired the result of use of Nmap, right to that USB stick. Uh, I'm not going to do that at this time, so I'm going to do basically just do a two, abort that process, close out of that window. Um, let's go back to the results of my OS scan. Yeah, there you can see the results of my OS scan against that target came up as uh, pretty positive. Looks like I found a Windows a Windows system, um, albeit a guess, appears to be about 97% accurate. Take note that when you're using Nmap uh, and the focus is on identifying the operating system of a target, it does require that there be an open TCP port, 
a closed TCP port and a UDP port. Uh, a lot of people overlook that. Uh, and as a result, that can lead to some pretty inaccurate OS guesses. Um, in this particular case, it's pretty, pretty confident that I'm looking at a Windows system. Um, port 5357, identified as uh, the WSD, uh, WSD API service, uh, which is a, an HTTP-based service on, on the Windows box. Um, so there's a great example of the use of Nmap on the PwnPad. If you're looking to gain further information on the use of Nmap, I would recommend visiting www.nmap.org and um, you'll find some really great information specifically in the documentation section on uh, the use of uh, the use of Nmap and uh, all the different switches and some of those little hints and tips as I was referring to the open port, the closed port, um, and the UDP port required in order to identify OS information is buried into that document as well. So that's that's good to know. Other than that, thanks for watching. Have yourselves a great day.